Okay, so if we look at this chemical reaction, the top step is an epoxide ring formation and the second step is an epoxide ring opening. And so if we look at that first step, this species right here is a peroxy acid, and that is what is going to form our epoxide. And so if we draw the product of that first step, we get rid of the double bond, and we form the epoxide that looks like that. And in the second step, we have this nucleophile shown right here, the lone pair on the nitrogen, and that is going to be what attacks the epoxide ring and opens. Now since there is no acid present, we are going to think about this as being a basic condition, and so that nitrogen, that nitrogen nucleophile, is going to attack the less hindered carbon. And so if we watch that attack, we can see nucleophile attacks the carbon that is less hindered, this one right here with less carbons around, and then in turn, this bond breaks and those electrons hop up onto the oxygen. And so our product of that reaction, there's our methyl group. So if the nitrogen attacks from the top, it is going to kick that oxygen down. And so we end up with the OH and the nucleophile being on the opposite side. And so that is our final product right there. The nucleophile attacked the less hindered. The nucleophile and the hydroxyl group are on the opposite side. And our nucleophile is NHCH2CH3. So we have to attach that whole thing, not just the nitrogen. Okay, so there's the first one. Here's the second reaction. And that first step is also peroxy acid. And so we're going to just simply form the epoxide. So the way that that looks is this way. And if we want to show dimensionality, we can say that that epoxy oxygen is coming up and our ethyl group is going down. This is definitely basic. So our CN actually looks like this. It's a nucleophile and it's also basic. So we have the lone pairs attacking again the less hindered. And so then that's going to kick up on. Now in this case, our CN is coming from underneath, and now our oxygen is going to come towards us in that alcohol. And so I'll show you this way. So our CN, which actually looks like this, is going to be opposite where our OH is. And so that is the product of this reaction. And the third problem asked for trans-2-pentene reacting with just peroxy acid. And what we get is just the epoxide. And so what I needed you to show me here was that our epoxide was trans. So we have a trans alkene that leads to a trans epoxide. And so that's what I was looking for in that question. I got about halfway through grading what you handed in. I want you to do this again, now that you know. There's a couple rules here that we didn't quite talk about and maybe you didn't even think about. And those rules for epoxides are that one, if you start with trans in your double bond, you got trans in your epoxide. Also, if you start with cis in your double bond, you got cis in your epoxide. So that's the first thing that we have to think about. And then the second rule is in basic conditions, the nucleophile goes to the less hindered. And in acid conditions, the nucleophile goes to the more hindered. And that's because we're going to form a stable carbocation. Okay, so these are the two main rules. Um, the third thing that people did wrong is you have to be aware of what is your nucleophile. So know what your nucleophile is. In the top one here, it is NH2CH2CH3. We attach that whole thing. And it's shown like that. And the second one, because Na is a cation and Cn minus is an anion, this is our nucleophile. In this third step, we didn't even get to the nucleophile stage. So I guess what we could call the fourth rule, I have not drawn on the paper, but that is that the nucleophile and the alcohol end up anti to each other. So this is called anti-addition. And it means that the nucleophile and the alcohol will be on the opposite sides of each other in the final product. The nucleophile attacks from one side and the oxygen kicks out, breaks the ring 
on the other side. The last thing I want to say is that epoxide can form either in front of the ring or behind the ring. And then of course the nucleophile attacks the back side and so we're going to get each product plus its enantiomer in all cases. I hope that helps. I'd like you to look into the chemistry as a second language first semester and do questions chapter 14. I need you to do questions number 22, 27, and 30. Hand those in because right now you don't want me grading what you wrote already. None of those were correct. Very few people would get any points at all for the stuff you handed to me on Thursday. So if you redo this question, 22, 27, and 30 from chapter 14 of organic chemistry as a second language, first semester topics, then we can get those three points back for your question of the day for last week. Okay, epoxides, woohoo!